awesome. How you doing, Angel? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thank you for having me. No problem, no problem. Thank you for reaching out to me. Social media world, you know what I mean? It's so easy to find anybody nowadays. Man, if was, you do your thing, I you know. know people find you. Yeah. You know what? I saw I first saw your work as an advertisement. Like really? while, while I was scrolling. Okay. You you advertise on Instagram, right? Oh uh, yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. So I saw it scrolling and it was like sponsored and I look at the sponsored stuff. I mm-hmm. like to see what people, you know, are selling or what they're mm-hmm. all about. And I saw your stuff and I was like, damn, this looks good, you know? <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. What was your like emotions? What impressed you? What caught your eye? Um, you know, the the clarity of it and mm-hmm. like how professional it looked. Okay. And modern. Thank you. Don't you think those are things you're going I think, for? I think this is actually what I would describe um, what I do is yeah. the modern way of, of giving the information to the people in, in the sense of the videography. Right. And a lot of people do this, but I would characterize my 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 passion is like modern modern videography. That's why I call my company is modern Chicago-based company uh, video photo. Right. How do you... Um is getting the modern look part of it, like moving it and having the right equipment, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't want you to give away your secrets. <laughs> Not really. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, I'm, as a personality, I'm perfectionist, kind of. Yeah. And for me, it's very important to have everything to be done, like, in the most perfect way as it's possible. You know what I mean? Okay. Sometimes when I work on something, on some video, and I, and I feel that this shot is not perfect enough, I just, you know, grab all of my stuff, go in the city, and for like maybe less than a second shot, I'm gonna do like a crazy work, you know what I mean? Just to make it happen, just to take this drone and fly again, because I don't know, it was fog or a little bit rain or right, right, or right. not like enough light or it was too dark, you know what yes, I mean? I'm yes, that yes. type of guy. Wow, that's good. That means you're passionate about your work and you're interested in attention to detail because the details separate you because everybody has video now on their phones yeah. or whatever. But when you go that extra little bit, it kind of separates you, right, from someone who... I feel, I feel like when you do videos, this is something that's going to stay forever. You know what I mean? This is yeah. something that you can watch in five years, 10 years, 20 years, your yeah. grandkids, kids, whatever. Yeah. And uh, if it stays and it, it makes sense to watch it again in the future, why not to make it like as, as, as best as possible? Yeah. So that's my mentality. That's my, my, my vision. And I try to stick to that. Sometimes, you know, you're getting lazy. You don't want to do stuff, but <laughs> you have to. If you want to be the best, you need to do that. Yeah, I know. Um, we work... We work in the audio world as well, and we're recording a record. And my friend is a producer on it, and he and he shares a lot of those qualities as well. My friend Prescott, and you know, we got to do it again. Sometimes we got to do it again. We got to sing it again. We have to edit it. You know, we have to get every edit perfect. Um, you know, and I think when you do those things, like I said before, it does kind of separate you and, and give your, your, your work a quality. How did you find that this was like a passion of yours? Um, you know, I'll, that's actually a good question because you mentioned about the audio world and that's what I actually started from. Oh, okay. I was, I'm a huge fan of like music, you know what I mean? A lot of people love music, but I'm a huge fan. I love music. Of different type. Like, Me too. is it like a pop? Uh, Me too. I was starting from the Michael Jackson when I was a kid. I love I was... metal. I love metal, <laughs> pop. I love, I love it all. And I, sometimes I... when I feel that I love the song, um, I have a goosebumps, obviously, right? And um, I ask my, my, myself a question, what I, what I can do with, with this type of like feeling, you know what I mean? So when I start filming, I was, I was asking my friends if they want to act uh, in my first videos and was using some certain songs that I was feeling that this is something, you know, special for me. Mm. So, you know, I was like, I don't know, listening a lot of type of music. Then I was asking my friends, you know, do you want to do some black and white video, like walking in the city and doing some cool stuff in yeah, slow yeah. motion? Yeah. We're going to post it in Facebook and a lot of people are going to go crazy. And they were like, yeah, hell yeah, let's do it. So that's how it started. Like and 10 uh, years ago when you were a kid? like how It long? was started maybe like like eight years ago. Okay. Eight years ago. Gotcha. That's fun. I mean, to get your friends together and make a little mini movie, it's fun. You know, uh, yeah, I was feeling that that this is something that would be not really, you know, I, I never wanted to get like some attention from people uh, just because of what I do. But I felt inside of myself that this is something that's going to open my, my vision, going to open some of my 
passion to creating something. You know what I mean? Mm. And that's was was making me satisfied. Got you, got you. And uh, man, I, I, your Instagram's really good. Thank Very you. impressive. Thank you. Um, how did you how did you get involved with Bad Boy Entertainment? Um, you know the guys that are P Diddy. Who else? Who else is involved in that? That's company? actually a good question. And before we're going to start talking about this, <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be a little surprise. Okay. I want to show you a new flavor, Sirac Watermelon. Yeah. Summer Watermelon, if you haven't tried. Uh, actually, I want you to try right now. Um, this is actually the brand that I'm working for, too. Uh, top quality vodka. You know, there is no, no words to describe because everybody knows about this brand. And right. uh, I want you to try this flavor. Okay. And we'll talk about we could try a about little bit. More. We could try a little bit. No problem. All right, sounds Let's, good. <laughs> but I was just curious, like, did you? How did you get to that point where, like, you're, you know, hanging with all the celebs and kind of doing that stuff? Just a little. Yeah, that's good. I'm gonna do mine with some sugar-free Red Bull. You're gonna do orange juice with yours. I'm gonna do the pineapple juice or pineapple juice. Pineapple oh. juice is a good mix. Pineapple with the uh, summer watermelon. That yep. does sound good. So, um, as you know, a lot of liquor companies, they interact with the nightlife. And yeah. uh, you can see a lot of commercials um, of the different type of vodkas. Uh, I don't know, like whiskeys, brandy, jeans, whatever. Um, done in nightclubs. So, when I started filming in, in our city, I was doing a lot of nightclub video shoots. Um, I was working with a bunch of nightclubs in the city and uh, I was trying to do my best because this is, was actually one of my works, um, one of my responsibilities that actually can get the attention from the random people, you know. Yeah. It's, instead of going like on the street and filming the trees, you can actually film something that is going on and people who were in this video can actually share it. So it gives you a little bit of exposure. Yes. So, for me, Good idea. I was and, I was actually very very serious about this job. I yeah. was very very serious. I you know I never was you know hanging out in the clubs. I was staying in the camera in the corner right. and focused of what shots are gonna get, what shots are I gonna get in like next three hours. Yeah, and and was trying to make the video as best as possible. Right, and um, you know the very important thing that I want to pay attention is uh, a lot of people do nightclub video shoots. A lot of people do photos in nightclubs. And sometimes it feels like this is some guy who's just like drinking and trying to impress girls, trying to have fun and also do some shots mm. and, and make like some money. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, For me, right, it was a little bit different. Right. I was like completely focused. You focused. I didn't, I didn't uh, you know... I don't want to say bad words, but I didn't waste my time. Yeah. I never like danced at the tables with the girls. I never tried to impress anybody on social media saying yeah, yeah. that, look how, how cool I am, look on the girls around me. Right, right, I right. was just doing my work. And uh, since I was focused, since I was doing this whole stuff, um, the, the liquor company, Sirac, they recognized my work. And I started working with the brand ambassador. Shout out to my man, Chris. He recognized my work and, and he put me in the game. Wow. Cool. Let's uh, cheers. Cheers. So, how do you like it? It's good. It's, it's really good. <laughs> it's too good. <laughs> it's dangerously good. But um, you know, I, what I find about successful people, a lot of times, is the discipline of the focus. So. I remember my friend was a comedian. It, well, he was a friend of a friend, and mm -hmm. now he's one of the biggest comedians in the country, Sebast wow, okay. Sebastian. Okay, and I met him. I mean, I, I used to meet him at clubs w w through my friends. My friends were better friends with him, mm -hmm. but I'd meet him, and you know, I'd be like, I'd be drunk, and he'd be sober as hell. Yeah, he'd be like, I got a show tomorrow. You know, I got a show. I can't do it. And we're like, come on, have a shot, man. You're a comedian. You're no fun. <laughs> You're no fun. You know what I mean? And look what happened. He focused and focused on the prize. Yep. You know, he never gave up and he never let anybody tell him no. And I think that's important for people to understand. Part, part of the gig of being successful, in my opinion, like half, you know, 50% of the uh, getting there is just showing up and yep. being present yep. and being professional. You know, don't show up drunk. Don't show up, you know, 
looking like shit or you exactly know, exactly having, exactly you know so what do you think about that i i totally agree with you uh you you have to get the risk and you get and you first of all i think you might need to understand what what exactly your purpose and what exactly your your goal is right as soon as you have a goal you you're going to take a little steps one by one step by, by the other step to get closer to your goal so right. um in my case the videography uh at the nightclubs were giving me a lot of connections to get my name on the board of you know Chicago videographers and a lot of people can know what I do so um I was you know I was staying focused I was getting the context I was doing my work as best as possible I was asking people to to support me to share my videos or whatever right and um and I got the results so that's that's my story yeah well that's a, yeah it's a good story <laughs> you know what I um you know I, I can definitely relate I think what you're saying is important about the step by step yeah Sometimes I think people, if you're looking at it in a kind of inspirational way, sometimes people, they they see the final result after, you know, they'll see your Instagram after years and years of yeah. work and they'll say, I can't do that. Yeah. I can't do that. But they don't know that you started, you know, f with your first video, but then your second video. You, you know, know you, know what's, you know what's the thing? I think when the people have feeling that they cannot do something, when mm -hmm. they look on somebody who already achieved, yeah. this is the bad feeling that you need to ask yourself first. Why do I have this feeling? Mm. The natural feeling of the successful person is uh, not successful, let's say, but the, the but the motivated person is mm. to is to be inspired by, by somebody who do better than you. You know what I mean? So right. I started my journey from the work in the fish market. I was selling fish, you know what I mean? And when I was driving on my bike to my to my to my place of work, I was watching some guys on Instagram that that was doing the videos. And I watched some guy from Russia and I was like, "Wow, this guy is younger than me and he does like so much cool stuff." And I start questioning myself, "Why I am not on his position? Why I cannot do the same?" You know what I mean? Yeah. So I came to the work and I talked to my manager. I said, "You know, listen, I cannot just be at, at the work today because I I just felt so much emotions in myself that you quit? I that, no I, I didn't quit <laughs> but I said you know can I just let's let's can can I have a day off today right right I right. went to the beach and I just was spending like five ne ne next like five hours with myself talking to myself about what I want to do in my life and uh, yeah what about the barrier to entry do you know what I mean by that every business has a barrier to entry some people say like it's how much you have to spend on equipment is there is is it hard to um, kind of get your finances together? To because the equipment's not cheap, right? Equipment, equipment is not cheap. But I'll be honest with you: there is there is no uh, there is no necessity to buy um, expensive equipment. Okay. I was starting with the little GoPro. I was just you know doing everything that I could with the GoPro, right. and I have really nice videos done on on this camera comparing to like the professional DSLRs. And and this is not excuse. Right. Uh, the expensive gear is not is not the question. Right. It's more about what's your passion and what do you want to do with this. Right. When I had like this little camera, I wanted to travel all over the country and do like crazy stuff. And in that time. I didn't have drones. I didn't have all of this, you know, like additional cool stuff. I was, I was just passionate. I just wanted to make it happen. What I had in my mind, right? And you know, what do you mean by drawings? Draw, draw, drone. Oh, drones. I mean the fly, flying. Oh yeah, drone. yeah, yeah. You know, when when you get the a little drone, bit more yeah. professional, you want to do, you want to have this the camera, drone that is sick. camera. Everybody loves the drone. The drone is sick. Yeah, it gives you the coolest views, and you do those far away to close. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So those are definitely cool. But even those, I think you're right. You can probably find cheap ones and start doing, you know, not everything has to be super expensive. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell to my guys that even work with me, um, some, some guys doing the backstage for me on the iPhones. You don't need to have a camera. You just need to have a phone. And with the phone, you can understand what kind of shots you need to do, what kind of like uh, edits later you're gonna be using during this, you know, filming. Yeah. So that's that's gonna be enough for you. You don't need to spend a lot of money. That's what I would do. I know yeah, the true. guys also from the city that work on the phones and they're working with a lot of businesses and making commercials. And these businesses don't even know why they're using the phones instead of the cameras because the end result, the video is like looking so good. You know what well, I mean? Oh yeah. The technology is just technology nowadays uh, went so far yeah. that little cameras like under the one thousand dollars can give you like a really nice image. Yeah, yeah. 
and it's all about how you're gonna put your ideas in and gonna use it. Move. I see a lot of movement. In a lot your of stuff. movement. Yeah. I, that, that, I love to. I love to show movement. I love. I love to show the videos that gonna that gonna inspire you and give you a little bit action. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think when you do movement in the video, it's something that actually make you believe that you're flying in that type of building yeah. or in that type of field or in that they, that type of location. Yeah. And um, you know, I just I just love that kind of like action action vibe of of creating my videos yeah and it, and i love it with music isn't it the best when music it, there's, yeah when there's music with the motion yeah you know i don't know there's something about it even driving and listening to music i, I feel I love being in motion i feel uh i feel every person in the deep in their mind does filming and editing during the everyday life mm. you drive the car and you listen to music, right? You're looking from the windows and you see some cool stuff, right? Yeah, like yeah. a bridge or like a house or like a tree or like some girl crossing crossing in front of your car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you somehow like, you know, memorize these moments and you edit in your head like this little story of your day. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's, yeah. You know how I think about it sometimes is um, how many people are there in the world? Seven billion? I think already seven, yeah. So that's how many perspectives there are, right? Yeah. From their eyes. Yes. You know, there's seven billion <clears throat> movies going on. <laughs> that's crazy, but, you know but I mean? it is like this, yeah. Right? Right now we're in like our own, you know, that's what I actually kind of like about the podcast too, is because the phones get out of the way and like we focus and we have like a direct conversation. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, when the medium first came out, I thought it was really cool because... You know, you rarely have this kind of one-on-one -on -one kind of like deep interaction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> seriously. And no. I feel honestly, I feel like a lot of people are scared of having the conversation, like deep conversation with each other. Nowadays, mm -hmm. people try to use like social media, all different type of of tools to to kind of like protect themselves from from the world, but hmm. in the same time to share as much as you can. That's a weird. Um, you know, combination, but it is it is like that. What do you mean to distance themselves I from mean, other people? I mean, people. I mean, people create their their image in the social media, which is completely sometimes different from the real life. But why they're doing this, they cannot answer that question. Mm. They're they're think that this is the rules of the game nowadays. That somebody need to to have like some some cool image of the cool guy of the, or the cool girl in front of the strangers. And it's gonna give you some benefits somehow, but mm. not a lot of people want to be uh, realistically true and to be honest with who they are, and and make this as a separation from the others. You know what I mean? Hmm. Do you think that that honesty kind of relates to your brand? I feel like honesty for me and loyalty. This is the two qualities that I that I really appreciate in the people who surrounded me, especially in my team. If you if you honest and you loyal to me, mm -hmm. like, you know, and I don't care how talented you are. I don't care how how good you are in filming or doing the photos. If right. you have these qualities in, in you as a human, we can go with you far in, in, in this business and in life. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. But um you know, I want to mention something about about the social media life. Um I feel like nowadays people have a lot of fast food information. When you go to the Instagram or Facebook, you can see that everybody is doing something really fast. Fast pictures, first videos, fast content. Nobody wants, as you said, um, just to sit down and have a conversation for one hour. People think like, oh, it's going to be too boring. Nobody's yeah. going to be watching this. Or it's going to be like, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So everybody wants to do a little bit of work and have like a lot of results. Oh. But nobody wants to do a lot of work and have like impressive result. They and don't want to put the actual time mm -mm. in. Like nope. all the hours. Cuz I can't even imagine how ma how many hours do you think you've spent editing you and your team probably mm. editing content. It's, a lot. <laughs> it's got to be thousands, right? Thousands. Thousands, for real? but Yeah, I like for me editing is fun. For me editing is is something that I enjoy and especially when I know what I film, um I kind of feel that uh this is something that that I going to feel joy during the work on it, you know what I mean? Yeah. You like to see the finished product. I love to like play that. around. I love to play, you know, when I, for example, film some video and I and I play with the editing. There is a couple of versions how you can put this video together. And it's it's all about your creativity, how with which version you're going to come up and how it's going to be different from 
from some previous versions that you did before. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Don't they say like uh, you're not a professional at, at whatever you're doing until you do 10,000 hours? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Kanye was screaming about that one time <laughs> in an in a interview. Kanye was like, I put my 10,000 hours, man. I know what I'm doing. I know yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> on, a, on a talk show once. Uh, 10,000 hours is a lot, though, because I, I did the math, and Joe Rogan, who I would consider probably one of the best podcasters ever, okay? If you take, he's done, let's say, 1,500 shows. Yeah. Okay? 1,500 times... Times three hours a show. That's 4,500 hours. 4,500 hours. He's at 1,500 shows. That's a lot of mm -hmm. time. So I don't know if you actually need 10,000 hours, but, <laughs> but, you, but know, you need a lot of time. To, you need a lot of time to get good at something for sure. There's no, there's no substitute for, what's it called? Um, for work, for, for practice. No I substitute. think when you really love something, you don't count the hours. You just do it. Yeah. And then it, after some, some time, after some years, you can see, oh, really? It was like 10 or 20 or 50,000 yeah. hours already. Yeah, but yeah. I still love it. I still going to do it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, what do you think is next for like video? I mean, where can video go after this? It seems like it's so good right now. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, what's the next after drones, after you know, high def, which everything's almost high def now? Then the phones in one or two years, everything's a, the phones are going to be amazing. In, in five years, the phones are going to be amazing. I think, um, the, the people right now have the chance to do as beautiful content, a beautiful videos yeah. with a little bit of equipment. Nowadays, you don't need to have like a crew of 50 people right. with a lot of huge cameras then only three person can 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 hold it, not not one, you know what I mean? Mm. You can do a lot of stuff by yourself nowadays. But honestly, I never was thinking about what's going to be next okay. in sense of like videography. You just like I, what you're doing. I see, I see that a lot of people just losing themselves in in the excess of the of the social media and of the light work on the light work um, everybody is so in rush to impress somebody on the social media with what they do yeah. so they will not they are not putting the work as people were doing before right uh, before let's say 10 years ago 20 years ago people were more hard working yeah like when michael jackson was working on his album he was like sitting maybe one year two year five years i don't know right but he was putting the work to making the unique sounds i see what you're unique, saying unique unique combinations to impress the people and 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 i don't know just well, just to just to put some his line in in the history yeah you know there's I mean? definitely a difference between creators and you know some girls post some things um you know, I look at I look I, I definitely notice the difference between someone who's a who's a true creator yeah. and someone who's just posting just things. Just pretending, pretending. Yeah, or posting things of other people, like you know, posting other people's quotes, other people's pictures, other people's videos. Like make your own stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's what I think. But I think, uh, especially nowadays, when you have access to see what other people doing, <laughs> you automatically uh, in the back of your mind start losing losing yourself and and losing the focus on what who you are on what in which direction you're going. Mm. Uh, as soon as you stop looking on the other people and you just focus on yourself, that's actually the time when you start gonna be progressing. You know mm. what I mean? That's the time when you're gonna be getting better and you're gonna be focused just on you and and not nothing else. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So for me, I honestly I don't have a lot of people that I watch of who they of, of the people who who do videos the same as me mm. um maybe it's bad maybe it's good but i feel myself better in that in that in that position because i don't feel myself kind of like depressed because of somebody who is like uh creating some amazing stuff that right. i cannot do at this moment right right but in the same time i feel like you know everything takes time you get inspired though i i i'm, I'm inspired for yeah. a, for There's a lot of reasons always people to inspire and look yeah. up to and stuff like that yep um what do you think what was i gonna say i forgot oh the jbl story mm -hmm. it was kind of cool you said you were during like the lockdown or something jbl actually <laughs> this is the result of of what i was talking to you 10 minutes ago this is something that i wanted to create as as the big work not something that 
you go in the evening, you shot a couple hours uh, during the lockdown in Chicago, and then you post the next morning saying, look how cool I am. I shot the, the, the empty streets of the city in downtown. <laughs> I wanted to actually build some story and mm. build some little movie and, and to use all the tools that I had in that time as much as possible. So the beginning of this was... Um, I honestly, I wanted to do some nice video with me walking in the empty streets and just posting and saying like, oh, like this is something cool, stay home, like put the mask, whatever, right? <laughs> but then um, after some time, I was I was just working at, in, in my living room and I saw that I have a headphones that was living on, on laying on a shelf. The headphones from the JBL I got when I went with Sirac to the Charlotte uh, last year, and uh, I was so impressed because in one of the events, they were just given these headphones for free. The headphones like 120 bucks, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And for me, I was like surprised. You don't need to do nothing. You just come and ask, can I have a headphones? And they were given like <laughs> hundreds of these headphones to the random people. Wow. So, you know, I was working at my home and I was, I was like, you know, let me just take these headphones. Let me just walk around and, 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 and hear them. Let me see how it is. So, you know, I just took like a little walk. I, I, I listened to the quality of the, of, the, of, the, of the music that these headphones give you. And I was impressed. And I was like, you know, let me do maybe the same thing that I was planning to do before with the walking of myself in the city, but also put the headphones and make it like a commercial. Mm. put the logo in the end and everybody is happy and this is the nice commercial right mm -hmm. but then after some time i was thinking like okay uh from the business standpoint this is going to be not enough because if you want to do commercial of the headphones you also need to show it on the females on the women so i was like okay let me find some model that also going to put these headphones on herself and also going to be walking with me and we are two together going to be so cool, right? right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I was like just thinking all day long and I was like, nah, this is going to be something not enough. I need to create, I need to connect us together. I need to mm. create something that going to make sense. Not just the models who are walking together, more but, of a story. but more a, like a story. A dialogue, yeah. And this is the thing. For me, Creating the story was always the challenge. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who film, they just film, they're using the music, but there is no sense in these videos. Mm. They're just looking nice, little cool edit, little, like just action shots. Yeah, yeah. But, but to create a really, uh, some sense in the video, it's hard. Because you, first of all, you need to write a script then you need to make sense that this script is making sense. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. You can show the script to your friends, to your parents. You can ask them, like, what do you feel about it? Is it make sense? And uh, and then you, you, you get to the work, you know what right. I mean? So in my case, um, I found a girl on Instagram. I like her look, and I was like, you know, this girl probably going to be best fit from all the people that I know in this video. Mm. And uh, I start thinking about how we can how i can connect us together in this video so it's gonna make sense i was um i was thinking okay we have a quarantine everything is locked um uh, nobody's on the streets everybody is at home but i cannot be at home i need to do something i, ca I cannot just sit at home and read books all day long i need to film this is who i am right, yeah so um i will start thinking about what the locations i can use to this video so the the locations that was available is the train is uh is the laundry and the streets mm -hmm. and that's it like and the and the, um and this and the stores where you can buy the food you know what i mean mm -hmm. so um the good friend of mine he let me do a little shots of in the beginning of the commercial in his store mm. then we did some shots in the train then we did some shots in the laundry and then we connected this all with the beautiful final shot uh in front of the <laughs> chicago theater on the state street Right, which is like so rare to find this street so empty. Yeah, and um, it was unbelievable that we still made it happen because after four days, the process, the rioting starts, and you know, oh my god, it wouldn't be hap It wouldn't be a. I wouldn't be able to do it nowadays. Right. So sometimes unless you need there's to another lockdown. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Which I hope there's not. Exactly. Wow, that's so cool. So what was the story like? You guys meet and like. So my idea was to make. To make something um, which is going to be very related to the regular life of the regular human mm. that is living in this city. Mm. A regular person who is taking the train, a regular person who is walking down the street, re a regular person who is going to the store and buying some stuff. Yeah. And uh, my idea was to, uh, to show the interaction between the guy and the girl who see each other in different situations and they using the same 
uh, the same tool, the same equipment uh, to listen in the music, the headphones. Mm. So in first situation, when I met the girl in the train, I didn't recognize her, but she saw me, right? After some time, I went to the laundry and she was doing the laundry and I saw her but she didn't see me. Oh. And then in the end, when we were crossing the street, we see each other and we were like, okay, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? This is, the, this is the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. That's cool. Very simple, yeah. but in, sometimes I feel when people film, when people create the stories, they, they want to create something extraordinary and they cannot make it happen in sense of filming to, 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 um, to put it on a, on, a, on a screen. You know mm. what I mean? It feels a little bit weird in the end some people cannot understand what did you mean by that. Yeah, I know. But in your head, you were like, but man, this is the amazing idea. They just didn't understand that. So you got to keep it simple. Some, you got to keep it simple. As more simple as you can, um, it's going to be understandable for the more people who are going to watch it. So that right. was my idea. And I'll tell, you, I'll tell you honest, I was very impressed how people react on this video mm -hmm. because three and a half minutes long to watch on Instagram nowadays is very rare for mm -hmm. a lot of people. People just watch 15 seconds, yeah. 10, 5, yeah. no more. But to watch really three and a half minutes, it's 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 crazy. And um, I, for me, it was, I had a conclusion to make that if you have a story and it's entertaining enough, people are going to be watching this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in the future, we're going to be making more stuff like that. For sure. I mean, <laughs> you can do, well, it seems like you can do commercials. Mm -hmm. You can do music videos promotional videos you just did you know it seems like you know you guys are going to be busy for a long time that was that was the plan this was yeah. actually this jbl video was combination of three different types of the videography it was the commercial it was music video and uh in the same time it was just like some cool art artistic video you know what i mean right. like fashion video gotcha so i think it was a good experiment and uh a lot of people you know appreciated that cool and they can see that on your Instagram? They can see on my Instagram. This video has already 14,000 views, and I am very impressed by that. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Oh, didn't you do something for a realtor that had like a million views or something yeah. like that? Yeah, <laughs> the story was, uh, man, I didn't even, honestly, I didn't even expect it that this video going to go crazy like that. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, what was different about it is that she was... Act I mean, there's a million videos for realtors, right? Yeah. But what was interesting about it and what I thought was interesting is that she did a rap. Like She did rap. <laughs> yeah. And honestly... And like, she did like her own rap and it was like a music video promotion. It was, crazy. It was cool. It was I do, different. You know, our company does a lot of music videos in the city um, for the local artists. And Twista. I was... For the Twista, yeah. But... You know, the thing is, this lady, she is not a professional rapper. Oh, yeah. But, but she put it her homework. She's a realtor. She is a realtor. And <laughs> she did it like like from A to Z, the way how it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? And it was so correct. It was a lot of sense. It was combined in the little song. And um, I think that's why people love it, because it was too simple to understand that for everybody. Mm. And, uh, you know... That's and she wrote it all? She wrote it all. Who did the music uh, and stuff? A friend of hers or something? Yes, yes. Ball on the Beat, that's the name of the guy. He created the song and he helped her to put this whole stuff together. Man, I, I'll tell you what, with, with technology now, like, it, it's just, it's amazing. I just don't think anybody can do anything, you know yeah. what I mean? If you put your mind to it, like you said... My dad, my dad, you know, sometimes I'm kind of, I'm getting older now. And my, yeah. I always think of what my dad used to say. He's like, just do it. Yeah. Just do it. You know, he'd go, remember, you know how Nike says? Yeah. <laughs> like, I hear these phrases. He just beat them into my head. And another one he used to tell me was, um, you know, don't make, no excuses. You know, don't make excuses. Mm -hmm. You know, be conscious of when you're making an excuse. You know what I mean? Because people sometimes aren't conscious of when they're actually making an excuse. But, and just, you know, make it happen. But, you know, I'll tell you something. I would change this Nike uh, phrase a little bit. <laughs> it says, just do it. Yeah. But a lot of people just doing it this for a long time. Mm. They just, it, the phrase needs to sound like this. Do it now. Mm. When you do it now, you don't find the excuses to, to do it tomorrow or right. in a week or in the two weeks or in a month yeah, yeah and and this is the biggest point this is the biggest regret that people have instead of doing something now 
Uh, mm. They lose, and the most important thing in their life is the time. And mm. uh, as soon as you're gonna do your stuff, as soon as you're gonna get the experience, bad or good, and you're gonna get the progress. Yeah, that's that's the thing that separate successful people, I think, uh, from from those who just trying yeah. or playing or wanna be successful. Those who are doing now, getting the experience also now. The important of the present yep. moment. Present moment. Taking taking advantage of that. Yes. Yeah, you know, I, I thought about doing this podcast for a long time, and I didn't do it. There was other reasons and other things, you know what I mean? But I was procrastinating. Absolutely, yeah. I was. And I was scared. Yeah. I'll be honest. I mean, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll also tell you that some of my friends will not come on it and, and do it with me. Yeah. They do not want to be out there. You know, and I understand that. That's fine. You know, some people want to be private. Um, but, you know, but when I started doing it, and I started really enjoying it, yeah. and I liked the challenge. And it feels good to have a, a challenge again, and I'm also doing music and some other things. But, man, challenge, when you do a challenge, it makes you feel the best. Yeah. It gives you confidence. You feel yourself, um, I think this is the thing about the man uh, that separates the man from the boy. Mm-hmm. When you when you do stuff in your life and you get the experience, you, you're going through the challenge which in the result as the result gives you the bad or the good result bad or the good experience you know mm-hmm. what i mean and with this experience you build yourself you right. build your confidence you yes. build strength man strength inside of you um a lot of people they can just pretend that they are knowing about the stuff but they never went through that they never went through the failure they never they mm-hmm. never fail they never fail they never uh <sighs> Mad the people who were not responsible as they were thinking they they will, but they know how to post the quotes on Instagram and look smart and cool. Mm. <laughs> right? This yeah. is this is crazy. Yeah. Where does this world go sometimes? Oh, I have no man, idea. Don't even get me started. Like you know what <laughs> you know what bothers me is like some of these. This movement, a lot of these kids are getting involved. Yeah, like twenty year olds. Mm-hmm. No offense to twenty year olds, but I'm not going to be told who I am. They're going to tell me. You know, I just feel, I just feel twenty-year-olds need to stop talking as much yeah. and start doing more. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, come talk to me after you failed or made some mistakes or dealt with a lot more people than your immediate surroundings or what you see on Instagram or Facebook or all that shit. I feel, you know what I mean? You're twenty years old. Five years ago, you were fifteen years and old. You, and you pretended you know about stuff about the life. Yeah, you know what I mean? about life or, or or you know all these huge topics. Yeah. Or you're toppling down statues, like dude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what I did like about your um, Instagram was you said. And you put this right in front, as you said, my goal in life is to be a good human being. Mm-hmm. How did, I mean, it's such a simple thought, mm-hmm. but I, I like that you put that because personally, I'm not, I like that. I'm a, I'm a human being first. Yeah. And I always try to think that way. Mm-hmm. I'm not Greek or yeah. American or, you know, national, I'm not a big fan yeah, of yeah, nationalism yeah. and stuff like that. But you know, I thought that was cool. Why did you put that? I feel I feel that that should be actually the main goal of every person to be the first, the good human being. As soon as you are the good human being, all the other stuff gonna be connected to you. Mm. Your business, your family, your relationship with your girl, uh, respect from the people who don't know you. Um, I think the actions should judge you as the person, not just the words. Mm. So for me, um, to be a good human being is my goal number one. And uh, with what I do, with my with my um, business, with my passion, um, my goal is to is to make the world a little bit better. So what I can do, maybe I cannot do a lot nowadays. Um, I'm still on my way to that. But yeah. for example, um, in in my work, I don't promote violence. I don't promote drugs. I don't promote uh, anything that is connected with with some bad stuff. You know what I mean? Mm. That I think is not. Is not good for the for the young generation to watch. So uh, you know, this is this is my standpoint. This is how I look on that. Yeah, but Twister was promoting alcohol. <laughs> but but this is this is a little bit different. This is a little bit different. Yeah, that's alcohol, a business. Alcohol was creating alcohol was creating the the our world. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I the wars, the stuff that was Listen, going I'm on. Just this was because of I'm just teasing alcohol. you. I'm teasing you. No, it's a business. I mean, yes. he was promoting a business. Yes, yes, yes. But um. I mean drugs. Yeah. This is this is a little different. Got you. When you're promoting the guy who is like you know smoking weed, this is, you know, I think this is something that should stay personal. 
Okay. Um, you don't want to glorify negative things. I'll tell you this. I'm not bad. I'm, I have no bad thoughts about the weed. You know what I mean? Mm. But this is the thing. Not a lot of people know how to handle that. Uh, a lot of young minds are watching the guys who are doing stuff and uh, they cannot judge their actions from two different perspectives some people are followers and they just do whatever they see you know right, what i mean yeah and 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 that's mostly of the people how the, the direction that they choose in their life yeah. so you need to be very careful with that so i decided in my in my business i will not be doing stuff that somehow can 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 change mindset of the young generation mm. gotcha. only only in good way gotcha. uh, i try you know i'll tell you this honestly with the social media, there is such a huge uh, influence you can do nowadays in a good way. Mm. Somebody is getting sick, you can help this person just to share in this story in your, uh, just sharing his post in your story. Right. And some of your friends who will never ever in your life gonna see this can send some money and help somehow this guy or that girl. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is very simple stuff, but uh, I think nowadays when you're gonna go to celebrities' Instagrams, you cannot see that they're like helping somebody in their stories, having like a million followers uh, base. They just, you know, they just do what they do, but they are not coming down and help the regular people. Mm. Do you think that's an obligation that they have? I think yes, of course. When you have that kind of following, yes, because uh, I feel like when the God puts you in that in that position mm. and make your life better, you need to give back to the people. You cannot just sit and enjoy. Mm. Because it's selfish. You need to be in the position where you give back to the people and make somebody's life better. Um, in that case, I think the karma gonna give you more. As soon as you give more back, uh, you get more. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But you know, this is not should be the rule uh, how you can get more stuff just for giving back, and you're just focusing on that. Focus on that. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're not going on the street and like, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get these five homeless guys right, five right. bucks. It's gonna be twenty five total, and maybe in next week somebody give, give me fifty. Right, right, right. Because that's, that's how not, it should work. Right. I know. You're saying that's not the ultimate motivation. Yeah. But it happens naturally. The more positive things you do, the more positive things will come. I back. feel, you know, I, I I'll be honest with you. I feel like some people are feel ashamed to show that they're helping some other people who are in need. You know what I mean? Why? Uh, I feel nowadays when people in Instagram, uh, they don't want to do post, for example, for somebody who uh, who they don't even know uh, to help, like with getting some money for the for the surgery, for example, or mm. somebody has something bad happen in their family. They think like, oh, my Instagram feed looks so good that I cannot <laughs> post this because it will not match to my follower base who already like me the way who I am. You oh, know what wow. I mean? That's what I feel. Hmm. And a lot of people, you're going to be surprised, but a lot of people have this mindset. So in my case, I, I, in, you know, I try to combine these two and show people who are watching me that there is okay to post stuff like this and, and help others. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know what? I never thought of... I never thought of Instagram as like a. I don't have a lot of followers, but I never thought but, of it as but like. The, but this is the thing. like a, a trick to. But this to is help. the thing about you. You're the old school way of the guy. You know what I mean? You have that mentality that Instagram. This is like just a separate thing. This is like a secondary thing that sometimes I can see, like mostly watch my friends and and that's it. You know what I mean? But the people nowadays are so crazy about that 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 they are in depression once in a month because they have not a lot of likes or not a lot of comments. You know what I mean? No, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I know. They value it differently. No, I just thought like uh, GoFundMe was more for that stuff or maybe Facebook. Yeah. You know, I thought maybe those two avenues. But yeah, Instagram could definitely be used yeah. for that. If you, you know, if you have the followers, sure, you could do it. I you think know? people should do it more and uh, the life going to be better of of all human beings. Yeah. If, as soon as we're going to start doing the good actions to each other, uh, the life the life of the of the planet going to be way better than it is nowadays. Yeah. Well, I think there's a lot of rich people that do that do donate and Of course. You know, yeah, of course. I think there is. You know. So, what's next from here? <laughs> What's your next big shoot you got coming up? Uh, I saw you just did Joy District. We did the Joy District. This is amazing, that looks good. amazing rooftop. And, yeah, uh, I know. They're so lucky that they have that because now that was the only way you could go out. A lot, you know, a lot of a lot of a lot of businesses slowly reopen. Yeah, and uh, and uh, 
people finally can get with with the loved ones and 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 enjoy the time together you guys should see masada on logan square very soon they're building the the restaurant inside of the place they have a rooftop with the garden they have yeah. a patio they have a nightclub i know masada oh my god man this is going to be the pretty much the most they're, they're redoing it they remodeling oh okay. remodeling completely it's going to be new audio system new lighting wow. system uh a lot of kind of like a european party is going to be there yeah it's going to be amazing wow i think uh chicago needed place like that and finally it's going to be yeah no they did well before i think like a lot of people would go sunday nights yeah. for like bandoleros or something or... but you know i'll tell you this i'm i'm very proud of the places like this who use this quarantine time yeah, uh, in the in the way of improving themselves, yes. improving their business, I know. making making the business look better. I know, um, not just sitting and waiting, but yeah. but doing the work. Absolutely. And um, you know, I think this is the way of of getting the success uh, after this pandemic and finally getting back to the normal life. Yeah, I think so too. I think it is an opportunity. It's the way you look at it. You know what I mean? Now we got time, two months, to do better things to our business. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, um, cheers, man. Thanks for bringing the Ciroc. Thank you so much. And uh, I think it was a good talk. Did you enjoy it? Thank you so much. Of course I did. Hey, thanks for reaching out to me. That was so cool. Um, because, you know, when I first started off, I just had friends and stuff. But now I want to get people that, you know, have interesting stories and people that I don't know. Yeah. You know, it makes it more interesting for both of us. There is a lot of, I think there is a lot of people in the city who have something to share with. Oh, yeah. But they don't have that platform. So I wish you to go crazy in this field and, and make your numbers grow and higher. And, I do. Uh, I, I want and really, and you know, the, the thing is really enjoying what you do. And I yeah. feel, and I feel that you really, really love what you focus on yeah this is like a part-time thing you know what i mean it's not like my main thing but it's fun it's definitely fun yeah. and, and um i want to get i want to be consistent with it i don't want i want to continue to do it so all right nice thank to you see so you much next. take care <laughs>